Hi everyone, it's Shannon. I am so excited to have you here today. I have so many quick and easy five minute home decor and DIY ideas to share with you in this video. And if you are new here, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel, The Daily DIYer, because I have so many more five minute quick and easy decor ideas coming for you here shortly in the new year. First up is a project that was inspired by a Target Dollar Spot small riser, but you guys were having a hard time finding them, so this is a take on that same concept. I have some small round discs and some candle stands that you can find at Hobby Lobby for super, super cheap. And of course, you can paint yours or stain yours depending on your own home's decor. I love this two-toned look, so the round plaques actually got two coats of white chalk paint, and then the candle stands got two coats of the uh, traditional burnt umber acrylic paint, which I love because if you put this on really sparingly, it kind of acts like a wood stain, so you get more of a wood stain look without the dry time because a acrylic paint dries so so quickly so I made sure to get good coverage on those candle cups and let those dry really really well and then all you have to do is use some super glue on those candle stands pop those upside down onto the backs of the round plaques and since super glue dries really quickly, you have a instant little tiered stand or riser for either your coffee mugs or small ornamental displays. It adds a cute little element when you need a little height in your vignettes or your home's decor. This project is a really, really quick and simple wreath idea. And the wreath is a wooden cutout that you can find at Hobby Lobby. It was really, really inexpensive. It was only about $5. So again, I have my white chalk paint, my traditional burnt umber, acrylic paint, as well as a few other supplies. I love wood. So anytime I can give my wood a stained look, that's usually what I do. So this wreath got a coat of the traditional burnt umber paint and I just let it dry. And what we're gonna do here is add some clothes pen onto a few of those little leaves with some super glue to clip those on there and then we can attach several different things in this video you'll see me displaying some family photos but you can also clip notes on here hearts on here for Valentine's Day flowers on there for springtime or you can also clip on recipes for your kitchen so so many ideas you can use this wreath for Trays and risers are such a beautiful accessory for your home's decor, and this is such a quick way to create one really inexpensively too. We're actually gonna make this one using some terracotta pot parts. And you can find these at Dollar Tree, you can find these at craft stores, usually year round too, which is great. I wanted mine to have sort of a weathered wood look, so the entire uh, terracotta part, pot parts got uh, a coat of gray chalk paint first. I love chalk paint because it sticks to pretty much anything. So it sticks to the terracotta really, really nicely. So you can see after that gray paint dried, then I came in with my white chalk paint and sort of sparingly added it onto the pieces and let some of that gray paint um, show through. Once all of my paint was dried, I took my super glue again and added the base to the top, held it in place for a little bit, and it was ready to go.
This is a really easy way to add labels to your baskets for organization. So you can see I have these baskets that are from Target and then the wood pieces are from Hobby Lobby along with chalkboard paint. So this is a paint we can actually write on with chalk and change up if we need to. So these little scrolly type pieces, like I said, I found at Hobby Lobby, very, very inexpensive for a pack of them. And I gave them a couple coats of the chalkboard paint first and let those dry. Now I'm gonna be using chalk markers for this. I will put a link to these down in the description box. I love them. You can see they have a nice dark color to them so that they stand out against the black background and you can also erase these too. So what I did is I just used some uh, super glue to glue these onto the baskets and you have a nice display piece but also organizational piece. This is a quick way to create a simple candle holder using scrap wood. This is a two by 12 that I cut down to four inches wide. Now you can have your hardware store do this for you if you don't have power tools like this. And once you have it cut, make sure you sand it really well. And then I just used a paddle bit on my drill. I believe this was a one and a half inch size and I just marked out the middle and that's where I drilled my very first hole. You wanna make sure you go down deep enough that your candles will sit down flush. And then I measured over evenly so that I had two more holes on either side. Again, making sure to drill down deep enough that my little tea lights that you can find at Dollar Tree and department stores will sit down inside. Next is a very, very quick and easy way to make a tray, which I love to use in my decor. I actually am using that same two by 12 that I showed you in the last project with the candle or the tea lights. And what I'm doing here is squaring off the end and then I measured over, I believe about eight inches to make this tray. Of course you can make yours however large or long you want. I just wanted a smaller one for this and once I had it sanded I took it into my craft room and this is faux leather ribbon you can buy at Hobby Lobby. I got it for 50% off so it was only $2.50 for the roll and I'm actually going to cut my leather down to size and then cut it in half so I have smaller uh, handles for the sides and to attach the ribbon to the sides I'm using brads so you can find these at craft stores and at uh, department stores and they're basically like heavy-duty tacks and we're gonna use a hammer to hammer the leather right down into the sides I did use these pliers to kind of help get them started so I didn't hammer my fingers um, at all and it just kind of holds it straight as you're hammering down and you're going to do that on both sides to create a really quick and easy tray.
Now let's make some farmhouse style coasters. I'm going to be using some scrap wood for this and measuring mine out to be four inches square. And then I'm just taking it over to my miter saw and cutting them down to size. Now to give them that farmhouse look, I'm gonna be using my white chalk paint for this and a foam paintbrush, and just kind of sparingly adding it and whitewashing all of the pieces. Next, I'm gonna be adding some decals onto the tops of the coasters. These are matte black vinyl in Oracle number 651 using the font The Skinny. If you don't have a vinyl machine, you can also just use a paint pen or a black marker and write whatever word onto your coasters that you want. Now we need to seal our coasters. I'm going to be using a polycrylic for this. Now you don't necessarily have to seal vinyl. It's usually just fine by itself, but we do need to seal the wood since it likely will come in contact with some type of moisture. Um, and you definitely want to kind of polycrylic over your vinyl versus sealing your wood and then putting your vinyl on top of it because the vinyl doesn't always tend to stick to the polycrylic. So that's why I put the poly over the decals. And then to create these into a surface safe coaster, I'm adding just some felt onto the backs. Here's another way to use up some of your scrap wood. We're gonna be using a two by four, which you can see is obviously a piece of scrap. I am going to be setting my miter saw to 60 degrees, which is as far as it would go to create that slant or that uh, angled cut that we need for this door stop. So we're just cutting off the end here and basically I'm using exactly what was cut off as the door stop. So you can see it's at a right angle and then the 60 degree slope. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a pretty finish so it looks cute in our home as it's being used. So I have my uh, traditional burnt umber acrylic paint and then I'm gonna go over it with my white chalk paint to kind of rough it up and give it an aged look. Now we're going to create a handle for it and I'm using the same faux leather ribbon from the tray project to make a little loop. And I'm also using those same brads to attach it onto the back of the door stop. This just creates sort of like a handle so you don't have to bend down so far to pull out your door stop when you need to remove it.
This was definitely another practical project that you could use daily in your home. It's a napkin holder and I'm cutting down a one by six into three pieces. The first one is three inches, the second one is four inches, and the last one is six inches. And then once your pieces are cut, it's time for assembly. I'm just using super glue for this. You could use wood glue, you could use uh, nails and actually nail it into place if you wanted. I'm also gonna be using some clamps to hold it into place until the glue sets and cures all the way. So the back piece is gonna be your six inch piece. The bottom of it is going to be your smallest piece that is only three inches. And then the front piece is going to be your four inch piece. Once you get all of your pieces glued together, you can go ahead and clamp it until it's dry. I let this sit for probably about 30 minutes. It doesn't take very long at all with super glue. And then again, I wanted to give it that weathered wood look. I love the white washed look, but I like that gray color underneath to just give it more of a farmhousey feel. So everything got a coat of the gray chalk paint first. I let that dry and then sparingly added my white chalk paint on top, just kind of wisping it on and letting some of that gray paint show through. Up next is a really cute miniature farmhouse style ladder you can display in your kitchen or in your bathroom and add towels to them. It's super duper cute. So I'm going to be using some paint stir sticks along with my hand saw and miter box. I'll make sure to link those both down in the description box. You can find those on Amazon. And two of the paint stir sticks I am cutting in half. They come 12 inches long, but I'm cutting these down to six inches long. So I have four total. I'm actually only gonna be using three of them though. And then I have two full pieces of, or two full paint stir sticks. And I made sure to sand them because they are kind of rough. And then I'm gonna be using my super glue to piece these all together. So I'm making sure that the bottom stays straight and level and then adding the rungs to the top and the bottom and then the center one I centered between the two. And then of course, once it is dry, you can go ahead and finish your ladder in a way that matches your home's decor. This next item I use all the time. I have it in my craft studio and it's a jute ball holder. So the jute is from Walmart and the pieces we're gonna use to put, to make the stand with are from Hobby Lobby. So I have another small wooden plaque in a circle shape and then a wooden peg. And basically we are going to drill a hole into the middle of that plaque so that we can insert the peg. So it just depends on what size your peg is, how big of a drill bit you'll need to create this space for it to sit into. Once that hole is drilled, you just add some glue into there so you can insert the peg and then it stays put. I'm using super glue again for this. 
and just sticking it straight in there. I'm adding some to the bottom of the peg too, just for good measure. Like I said, it doesn't take very long at all for this to dry, and then you can go ahead and paint. This project is a different take on a wind chime. It's actually going to be holding vases so you can put flowers in them instead. And a lot of the supplies that we have here are from Dollar Tree. Here's my jute holder that we just finished making. So I'm using that already. And I have little mini vases from Dollar Tree and we're actually going to be using the lid off of the bigger container. You will need your drill and drill bit for this. And I'm basically just drilling holes into the tops, onto the top of that lid. We're gonna be stringing jute through there so it can hang. Then for the little vases, they actually came with miniature seashells in them. So I just took the seashells out I cut some of that jute and I tied them around the bottle so that they would hang and then I fed that jute up through the top of the lid. So I continued that process with all three vases. And once I had all of my jute strung up through the lid, I just tied them all together at the top and created a loop. Up next is one that will probably take you closer to a minute than five minutes and it's just a very quick way to display either photos or artwork or a printable and all you're going to need are some clothespins, a glue stick, and then whatever you are wanting to display. So I just have some family photos here. I'm going to use my paper trimmer which I'll link down in the description box. Definitely something nice to have on hand to create straight and even cuts with. And what you're going to do is take your clothespin and offset it into that little groove. So really, really quick and easy, you're basically creating a stand for your photos. I'm going to be taking my glue stick, adding the glue on the back of the clothespin, and then putting the artwork or your photo straight onto the front. And then you've just created the quickest and most easy display stand in no time at all. This is sort of a different take on a wreath where we're creating more of like a pocket to display our flowers and greenery than a traditional wreath where you would put it around the outside. And we're going to be using an embroidery hoop and some fabric. You'll need some scissors and of course your flowers for this. And what I'm doing is sort of using my hoop as a guide to create a rectangle. You'll need two pieces. So I just folded the fabric over 
and cut them both out at the same time and then I added the fabric to half of the hoop so you're not going to cover the entire circle just half of it and then you'll cut off any excess in the back and that's basically how we created our little pocket and then all you have to do is add your flowers and greenery to the inside. This plant hanger is one that you don't have to know how to crochet or how to macrame to create. We're starting with a simple doily from the craft store and I'm taking yarn in the same color and weaving it through the outside edges. And then I am actually cutting longer pieces of yarn and I'm attaching those through the loops on the top, bottom, and right sides of the planter. I kind of put the planter in there as I'm working. And then I pulled all of those pieces of yarn up straight, tied a knot, tied another knot so that I could create a loop. And then I hung it and I pulled the yarn tight around the edges when I had wove them around the outside. That way I had good placement. And now we're going to make a tassel to hang from the bottom. I do have a full tutorial on how to make tassels and I will link that down in the description box below. You can make these really quickly and easily too. So make sure to check the link below if you want to create this part. Once I had my tassel created, I just tied it onto the bottom of my plant hanger. I love fresh flowers and this is a completely different take on how to display them. We're actually going to cut a little bit underneath where the flower starts, cut the stem off. We want to leave some of that stem intact and then we're going to fluff our flowers up. We're kind of going to make them a little bit larger because usually they come pretty tight and spread out those petals and I kind of missed or lost out on the next piece of footage but basically I'm taking some bubble wrap I cut the bubble wrap into circles cut a hole in the center of the bubble wrap and inserted the stem into the bubble wrap little circles and that is what helps your flowers float on top of the water so once you have your flowers kind of spread out and sitting on top of the bubble wrap, you can put them in a little vase like I'm showing you here. And it's just a different way to display flowers. You don't need as many when you do it this way. Super duper cute and easy. Now we're going to create a tile style planter using these four by four inch size white tiles. You can get them for about 15 cents a piece at the hardware store and I'm using my super glue to attach them to a piece of scrap wood that is the same size as the base of this planter. So I'm just going around the edges and making sure that I add glue to um, three of the edges and leaving the top without glue and that way all of our tiles connect and glue together. And then this is definitely one you would want to put a fake plant into unless you have some type of sealer that you add to the inside of this since it could damage the wood but it makes a cute planter for artificial plants for sure. Now for some quick and easy artwork, we're gonna use some spray paint, some canvases, and then you'll need either artificial or live flowers or ferns or plants. We're just laying it down on our canvas and then taking our spray paint and spraying right onto the canvas. I would suggest maybe using a spray adhesive on your 
uh, plants before you put them down because the spray paint does kind of blow them around a little bit. You can also add a base color to your canvases and then spray another color on top of that to kind of get a two-toned look. This is kind of more of an abstract way of creating art, but it's super duper cute when it's finished. Here we're gonna be using three vases from Dollar Tree. They were yellow, so I spray painted them white to start. Once they were dry, I moved them inside and we're gonna be connecting them together with some thicker jute. I get this from Walmart. I wanna say it's four ply, so it has a heavier uh, weight to it. And I just wrapped them around the three vases a few times and tied a knot. This cute chalkboard has a little clothespin in the back and it just clips right on so I wrote the word home and that's all there is to creating this cute little farmhouse base display. You can make so many things with mason jars and this project is a home type vase display piece and basically what we're using is four mason jars for this and using some burlap ribbon that you can get from Dollar Tree. I just measured one around that first glass or the first mason jar and then cut three more down to the exact same size and then I'll be using my hot glue to glue those around each mason jar. Here is where you can get really creative and add whatever word you'd want onto the front of your jars using poster stickers from Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna be writing the word home, so of course each letter will go on its own jar. This is another project you can create using scrap wood. It's a little ring holder. So this is a piece of a shelf I had cut down so it was in my workshop. I just cleaned the edges up and repainted the sides so they all blended together. And then I'll be adding a design onto the front. I really wanted it to have a farmhousey look so I decided to add sort of a grain sack stripe on the sides. So this part does take a little bit of time. I decided to go ahead and add this in here just so you would see the process but of course if you just add the hooks onto the front your five minute project is pretty much done but it's always fun to get creative and add your own spin and touch on your decor so basically I'm just using some painters tape and some chalk paint to create different sized stripes on the edges to really give it some style.
Now to hang it, I'm gonna be using a sawtooth picture hanger that I get from Amazon. I'll link those down below too. This makes hanging your wood signs and wood projects really, really easy. You basically just find the center back of your project and then your hooks kind of have a center on them, a center point, and then you take your hammer and hammer them straight into the wood. It takes no time at all. It's so, so easy. And then once that is in there, we are going to add some cup hooks onto the front. You can add as many as you want or even just one if you want. I just went ahead and measured mine out so that they were even and centered uh, within the space. And then you just twist them straight into the wood and they're good to go. I'm going to show you an easy way to cover up old planters using a placemat. So this placemat is actually from Hobby Lobby and I had a really basic and simple planter. So there's so many options out there for placemats. I thought this was a great idea. I'm going to be using some safety pins to basically just fold my placemat down to size so that it would fit the height of my planter. And then I am safety pinning it back in the back side so you don't see that part. Part. and the great thing about this is it does not damage your planter it doesn't really damage your placemat either so you can easily change this out depending on if your style changes it changes or if the season changes and you get a completely different look for a really um, inexpensive placemat and a quick and easy transition Next is more of a sentimental project. It's a sachet and it has herbs inside of it that are from our wedding. We actually had our guests throw herbs down the aisle instead of rice or petals um, because they uh, symbolize different things for us. So for this sachet, I'm gonna be using some fabric again and we're gonna be using some fabric hot glue sticks uh, to do this instead of sewing. If you wanna sew, of course you can sew. I'm not not the best at it so I usually grab my glue gun and they do have fabric glue sticks and I'll link those down in the description box and I'll also link our uh, little uh, wedding video down there if you'd want to see that too and basically I'm just making a pillow out of some fabric using my fabric hot glue sticks to glue two of the sides together because as you can see I cut or I folded it so um, it I just had to work with like three sides to close up instead of four so I just dumped all of the herbs inside you could put potpourri in here or some kind of uh, scented uh, rice or something that you get from the store and I just basically hot glued all of those sides down and used a little bit of lace to tie around the center. It kind of just gave it a little bit of a decorative touch and you can add these to your drawers. You can add these as like a little decorative touch in your decor. This lace is actually just from Dollar Tree too. So just a fun, quick little project and little keepsake for us. Another idea for a plant stand is just to use an inexpensive tomato cage flipped upside down. So I got my tomato cage from Walmart, really inexpensive. And basically you're gonna want to cut off the legs or the parts that would go down into the ground. I had a hard time using this little saw. I'm sure it was not created to cut through metal. So I had enlisted the help of Brian to come in with some heavy duty wire cutters and he just snipped those off for me. Now at this point you can leave it. You can actually just leave it that metal or you can make it a little bit more decorative like I'm doing here. I'm just taking my chalk paint and painting the whole thing white. 
Uh, honestly, I probably would suggest spray painting this if you can, but I have a feeling it was raining or something this day, this day so I wasn't able to go outside and spray paint. Chalk paint works just as good too, so once you have your plant stand finished, you just want to make sure you have a plant or a planter that is big enough that it doesn't fall through the top or that it's not too big that it doesn't sit evenly on there. Especially when you go to water it, you don't want them tipping over or anything. But that's just how simple it is. And this one, I'm actually updating the look of a flattest basket that you can find at Ikea. But you could do this to any basket, really. Just check the thrift store even. Usually they have baskets really, really cheap. I folded my basket in half because it's like a grass type basket. And I'm just painting the bottom of it white. It's just a really quick and easy way to take something maybe you already have or something you find at the thrift store and give it more of an updated look. And like I said, I'll have even more quick and easy and budget-friendly DIYs and home decor ideas coming in the new year, so I'd love to have you subscribe and stick around for that. I'll also have more inspirational videos popping up on your screen that you can check out next. I want to thank you all so, so much for joining me today, and I will see you in the next video. Happy crafting!